Hello my friends, welcome to another new and exciting mod that is coming from the Chinese scene. This is Legacy of the Purifiers, made by HTXL, I believe, which is just one of those easy names to flow off the tongue. Now, from what I understand, HTXL is a modder that has made a large diversity of different things, of uh, custom, or custom races, basically, custom factions, and then... What he does with every single one, I guess it could be a she, I don't know. What they do is every single time that they make a new faction, in their next mod, that faction is added in. Like, so we're starting from the beginning. This is the first thing that I know of that they made. And then if we ever do their next thing, this purifier faction will be part of the mod, which I think is a really, really cool idea. But for now, we are going to see exactly what we got with these purifier guys. I believe this is another one that does not have great translation, so we're going to have to figure things out as we go. But I am ready to slay. All right, what do we got here? We got Dreadnoughts. Attacking pretty fast. Uh, armor penetration. Two attacks, range seven. A barrier ability. Creates a line that can... What? That does not create a line. Uh, Dreadnought can be resurrected after death once every 90 seconds, okay? And it looks like these leap and intercept a target, and they deal damage nearby. We got Instigators. Sorry, Flash Knights, which have Blink. We got Charge, and we have Dragoons. Cause a lot of damage to lightly armored units. Okay. So it looks like we have a fairly normal set of things. I mean... This is the unit I'm most interested in, this Dreadnought. Let's, uh, oh, that is a long jump. Okay, look at that. That fires, it's kind of like the Diamondback attack, where it is a projectile, but it's very quick. And we got to make sure we don't lose these. We got Sweeping Robots. They seem to do quite a bit of damage. Now, I believe that uh, all of this stuff is on Nightmare. I'm not entirely sure. I don't... I like all the uh, scouts and stuff flying by. I always love this mission because it does give you a little sneak preview about what you're actually going to be getting. This guy seems really good. The idea of an immortal unit that actually has like a rebirth effect is very interesting. Because there's definitely a world where we'd want to put those in front. It's That barrier, does it say 50 damage? That seems very bad. <laughs> okay, let's try to get these guys forward. Snipe all this stuff. Uh, these legionnaires are rebuilding, of course, which is a very nice tool to have. Not the craziest thing in the history of mankind, though. And let's uh, get some more guys. I literally have no idea how to tell if this is Nightmare. Oh, look at that. Oh, so it's that's not a cooldown, is it? Leave behind wreckage, which can be whistle machine refactored. Yeah. <laughs> a whistle machine. All right. Um, I, I believe it. <laughs> okay. I don't know how to whistle machine refactor. We'll have to figure that out as we unlock things. This is, this is the mission to a move stuff. So we're gonna, we're gonna learn about our whistle machines as we go. Yeah. Uh, blink these over here. So these are not instigators. They don't have multiple charges of blink. It is nice to have a Dragoon type unit though, and being good against light is very different for Dragoons. But it looks like we are making good progress, army feels very strong, sweeping robots, actually being able to hit air is really nice for them too. And I do like that we have a heavy melee and a light melee unit, I think that's cool. I feel like StarCraft could use more melee stuff, melee is always fun. Because kind of, you have to like get into the fight with melee. Warriors, you can't be a wimp about it. Alright, so we're making good progress. I think we can leave the zealots there, keep cleaning this stuff up, and take these guys down. What is the second thing? Okay, that's just the shield. Oh wow, these have a lot of durability! Whoa, four armor and three shield armor is ridiculous. Alright, I have a feeling this is going to be one of those mods. From what I've heard... The uh, Chinese scene is very receptive to the entire style of making the enemies absurd and giving you the most absurd tools ever to deal with it. So I'm not I'm not surprised that this is the way that this is gonna go. Is it's gonna be one of those super giga powerful 
but lots and lots of scary enemy type mods. For now, though, for now I'm feeling good. Let's uh, run back here. Now we're going to have to deal with the Nidus. Let's just come on over and target it down. Nice. These do so much damage. I know it doesn't seem like much, but the times two and the actual fast attack speed is pretty good. And we have a lot of guys. Actually, looking at the number, this is <laughs> not, not that off of default play experience. This is just one of those missions that you're so powerful. Oh, hello. We're good. Alright, let's get this last bonus objective, and I think we're going to have time to play three missions today. You know, get a real good feel of how everything goes, because I've said it before and I'll say it every single time, you really can't tell how good a faction is until you've gotten at least a little bit into the mid-game. You know, finish that first planet off, <laughs> because stuff like this, it's not meant to be a giga challenge. Sorry, I just noticed that we have... Alright, I'm going to recycle my photon turret. Is that the one I clicked to recycle? Alright. Let's uh, blink this guy over here. Deal with the hybrid. And then get under this guardian. I keep expecting to do more damage than this, but these guys actually do really bad damage. These uh, Flash Knights, they've got the same durability as a Stalker, but in a weird little distribution. Damage output very low, though. Alright, mission number two. Uh, we're going to be able to play with a little bit of a smaller group of stuff from now on, so let us, uh, let us learn. It does appear that this is just brutal difficulty for now. It doesn't say Nightmare, at least. We'll learn how expensive these units are as well. They could be pretty pricey. Alright guys, let's do it. Let's try not lose anything. This is a pretty easy mission to do without a death, uh, particularly... I mean, Blink is just Blink, right? Actually, I guess we're going to use the Zealot as well, so... It doesn't really apply. I just want to keep the Stalkers alive if at all possible. I will say this guy's pretty responsive. They're uh, a little bit more responsive than the Stalker is when it comes to getting these attacks off really fast. I like that. I mean, the Stalker should be microable, and the actual Stalker doesn't quite have the lack of hit lag. You have to sit there waiting for the shot to fire a little bit. Okay. Ooh, look at that. Oh, I really like that. Um, just having a power field at the main base is great. Orbital Airborne drops an orbital pod loaded with purifier troops at the target location, causing, looks like, damage, 150 damage. Capacity upgrade. The target production biz, uh, building will now be in a low energy state. Operation speed will be increased 25% and open a second. Okay, so we can actually reactor our buildings. That's cool. And we got our jump whistle machines. An aerial mechanical support unit. Refactoring skills can be used. Heck yeah, let's refactor. I don't really know what I'm doing, but that's okay. Oh, look at this. Okay, so these are unpowered, but it doesn't actually, like, full unpower. It's, uh, like, a pseudo-unpowered state. That's cool. I, I kind of like that. It's not as punishing as the power mechanic, because the, the binary nature of power is very, very crazy. Yeah, let's get these guys over here, and then we will learn about all of our little friends. So what I want to do is chrono that, chrono that. Is this just permanent? Yeah, it looks like that's just a permanent little upgrade. Basically, we built a reactor. We got this little guy. What does he do? Oh, hello. Okay. Uh, not very good damage. Lightning gun. Got a little bit of range. Attacks three times. Air and ground. And then it reconstructs the target. So this is the thing that brings the zealots back to life. All right, let's try it. So we can go lots of whistle machines, lots of vigilance, synchronized as a legionnaire by protocol. Yeah, me too. I assume that's an upgrade thing that we have the ability to do 
later because I don't know what protocol means, but we'll learn. And I want to try this orbital drop thing. So we're going to save up 400 minerals. We're just going to get more of these flyers. And then, sa yeah, save up that money and drop the stuff. These are, yeah, these are not that expensive. 30 gas is a little bit. Can we synchronize as an encourager by protocol? We'll have to figure that mechanic out. Okay, we almost have enough money. Go get them. So when these die, we should be able to rebuild them if I understand how they work correctly. And that'll be really nice. What is the cooldown on that? It is 20 energy, 20 second cooldown. Nice. That's a very interesting way to go about it. So the Zealot itself is not this super durable long term unit. But if we want to invest gas into a support spellcaster for it, it is. All right, cool. I like it. Let's go over here, and then we're going to summon our friends. Oh, these guys are very vulnerable. Same uh, durability as a sentry. Though they are kind of cheap for what you get. Definitely a very good unit. And dropping the guys was very nice as well. This faction is feeling very strong to me right now. Alright. Partially because normally when you start Legacy of the Void, you just don't have anything good. It, I feel like the intro to Legacy of the Void is way harder than the other campaigns. Uh, not this mission, but the next mission most definitely. I don't know if anyone else feels that way. I'm always kind of shocked how crazy things get. But this time I'm feeling pretty confident with our infinitely regenerating front line, as long as we don't get these sniped. Of course, these are more vulnerable to anti-air stuff, so we have to be careful on that side. But as long as we can not get corrupted, or mutilist, or whatever, it should be okay. Ooh, we're not good against these heavy armor targets. All of our stuff fires very fast, or attacks multiple times, or both. We can get under that. Cool. And jump on over here. I don't know if we've lost a unit so far. It's really, really hard to tell with all the regenerating we've done. I guess that'll be the real showcase of how good this unit is, but I think that it's incredible. One thing that's interesting about this style of play is we don't actually have any, like, healing. It's just death resuscitation, which uh, does have its own downsides compared to being able to medic things up, for example, where we could start very, very vulnerable in a fight, and we would just lose a bunch of stuff really early and then have to spend the time refurbishing it, which would be not necessarily ideal. But for now, on this mission, I think that's all that we need. Just make sure that these uh, jumpy boys are in a safe spot. Oh, that's a lot of stuff. Okay, yeah, we got extra guys here. I'm pretty sure that's more than normal, at least. Two carriers, three immortals. That's a decent bit. But we kind of blew through it. Let's get uh, Z Daddy over there and move on to mission number three. Do not resist the unity he brings. This is always the easiest bit. Uh, they just don't have detection here. You don't need to do anything in this segment unless they, like... <laughs> Unless you're playing Nightmare or something, which we definitively are not. Ow. So this is a mod for all you guys out there who uh, are looking for a more approachable experience. Ow, don't kill them, I love them. Okay, I'm guessing two units lost. I think I lost two of the Spark Knights. Give me that number. Two! Oh, what a loser! All right, mission number three, here we go. We're going to get the photon can shield battery. I don't know if these are exactly accurate. They may not be indicators of what we actually unlock, but we will see here, I guess. Okay. 
I really do like having this power field right here. I think that's really nice. Oh, force shield. Makes friendly buildings and target area temporarily invincible. And we got a, a drive core node. It requires a network core, which I assume is the cybernetics core. Oh, we can capacity upgrade our own main control center. Hey, that's pretty good. So that is reactoring the Nexus. That's going to be a big boost. So I wonder if we have a Spear of a Dune here. That is one of those questions. 300 gas. Upgrade basic purifier units and up to one heavy purifier unit in the target area to corresponding elite units. Oh. Oh. And it's 300 gas. What an interesting way to do things. It's like a mercenary promotion in an AoE. This is... Okay, I'm getting... I'm very interested here. This is a very fascinating way to do things. All right. Uh, let's get you upgraded with the capacity. Not having to build a bunch of production structures is going to be so nice. Protoss finds itself needing so much production all the time. But the uh, addition of the reactor probes and this means that we're going to be set up like instantly. It's going to be ready to rock. This is another one where the worker looks like it does not cost any supply. I just noticed that. So we're probably going to be needing that 200 supply as time goes on. And we have the scout, which is not the scout. It's an adept. <laughs> it is, uh... I want to get this jump core node, or drive core node, yeah. Let's grab it. It's 200 gas. We need a lot of gas here. So I guess we need to be making uh, a lot of vigilance. What do these do? Okay, they just have... Oh! Oh! First of all, we have deploy pylon. But we, uh... Oh, it becomes the ghost. Finally, StarCraft Ghost has been released. So exciting. Ow, 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 ow. Leave him alone. Leave him alone. <laughs> we gotta upgrade these guys. Okay, we're gonna get our Mothership Core. And then... Orbital Strike. <laughs> that is a fun ability. Oh my goodness, I really like that. <laughs> Warping reinforcements eat your heart out. Oh, that is beautiful. Okay, we have warp gates. <laughs> Get our stuff going. I didn't mean to phase those. And we have a mothership core. What does it do? Oh, it's a mobile pylon field. And it can warp in pylons, shield batteries, and photon cannons. Okay. So, uh, I'm sure there are some people that are wondering why I'm not using some of those names, like Photon Turret, and that is because, remember, this is Google Translated, so a lot of that stuff would be things that are originally correct in name, and then they get translated one way, and they get translated the other way back, and that wasn't the original intent of the mod maker. They didn't want it to be called the Photon Turret. They most likely just want it to be the Photon Cannon. Okay, I am excited to do our promotion ceremony, and we're going to see what all of our guys are. So, do we not get 112233 upgrades here? Because that's an addition to the game that is very fascinating as well. That means that we have a lot of early game power, but get worse and worse over time. But instead, we are promoting like this. That's cool. That's very cool. What a fancy way to do things. Okay. Let's just keep dropping these and let's go clear. Does this count for powering up the warp gates? We just go next to it. Increase the buildings, shield, shield armor, grants it a weapon. Nice, nice. So we should be able to just kind of go through here. Let's get more adepts as we go. Oh, this, uh, this feels really good to play. Like, very, very simple and easy to just grab and go with. I don't need to learn a million different things. It seems like the baseline power level of the faction is very, very high. And the utility of things like this is very good. 
So we drop this down. How much gas do you get? It's not bad. Take these out as well. So the thing that I'm like most interested in, honestly, is seeing what this mod maker's creations turn into as time goes on. Because seeing this and then having this faction incorporated into the enemy stuff in their later work sounds very cool to me. You know? I don't know if you guys are as excited about that as I idea as I am, but just having like your own cinematic universe of mods <laughs> is a really neat thing. Okay, so build. Build that. And then... Oh, we can't overcharge it until the fight is over. Actually, we're kind of getting toasted here. No, no, no. We're going to take it. We're taking a lot more damage than we need to, though. Reunify and... Overcharge the pylon. I think we can leave a couple guys here and move on to the end because that's apparently what we're doing. I got so wrapped up in everything that I kind of forgot to... Kind of forgot to defend. That's fine. We're almost finished, the oh. Spear of is this building cannot be targeted. No! Uh, it probably says that right here! Enough. Oh! <laughs> Literacy is not my strong suit! Let's pick a bunch of guys over there. These, yeah, look at how fast these flyers die. It's okay. So do the enemies. Yeah, so this uh, actually is a fascinating way. If we don't have these air and ground upgrades, what's going to happen is as time goes on, the units like those are going to be far worse at fighting because they attack a lot, but they do little bits of damage, right? So, like, when the enemy has 3-3 three, three at the end of the campaign, that thing is going to tickle, but right now it is incredibly strong. Which explains why a lot of these units, when we were mousing over their stuff, they have a little bit of armor ignore. Huh. So I guess that's one way to make the early bits easy and the late bits really hard. That is fascinating. I'm interested to see how that works out. Alrighty guys, that is going to be the end of mission, or day one, num video number one of the Legacy of the Purifier. If you guys are interested in seeing more of this, then I will play more. And if not, we'll move on to something else. So tell me what you think in the comments and we'll, I will go according to how you guys are feeling. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace.